Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India
you end up with um, dou u by dou t plus u minus a dou u by dou x minus 1 by rho a dou p by dou t plus u minus a dou p by dou x equal to 0. Now what is uh, the significance? You can see that there are two terms u plus a and u minus a. They are quite uh, significant and uh, this is where uh, the application of uh, method of characteristics comes into picture. Mm, so, uh, what we are looking for is some transformation. So, these are partial differential equations. So, is there uh, some transformation that we can apply so as to convert them to more uh, easily uh, solvable differential equations, ordinary differential equations. And uh, uh, for hyperbolic equations, uh, these are hyperbolic equations. Uh, then uh, there is uh, a method to do it and that is uh, the method of characteristics uh, and uh, to uh, understand this you can go back to our previous classes when we were looking at a general variable uh, and uh, looking at dou u by dou t plus c dou u by dou x equal to 0 uh, where c is a constant of propagation. And we were looking how can we convert this to a um, an ordinary differential equation and uh, u being a function of x and t and it can be written du can be written as uh, dou u by dou t dt plus dou u by dou x dx and comparing these two uh, we sort of arrived at if we consider dx by dt is c then uh, we can write this as du or an ordinary differential equation it can be taken to be du so along lines dx by dt equal to c okay so along these lines uh, which gives out the lines as x minus ct equal to some uh, constant some constant x minus ct is a constant so along these lines you can convert uh, the uh, partial first order partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation. So, uh, this uh, is the basic principle of method of characteristics and you can always come back to the simple um, uh, equation in order to understand what we are doing. So, uh, you can take the same principles here and come back to this problem uh, that we have uh, which is more involved you have both u and p both are functions of uh, space and time x and t and p is also a function of x and t but you look at these equations you have similar form you have u plus a here so along the lines dx by dt is equal to u plus a so along these lines uh, this particular form gets converted into dp while this will convert to du which is change in uh, velocity ok. So, uh, now du is uh, here d uh, represents uh, total derivative. So, here uh, again uh, there are another set of characteristics for this problem which is u minus a. So, there are two sets one is u plus a the other one is u minus a. So, uh, dx by dt is u minus a. So, this set of characteristics is known as uh, is generally called c plus and this set is called c minus uh, that is the way it is uh, represented. So, if you do uh, make those uh, changes then you get two equations mm, these equations are called as the compatibility equations. So, they convert. So, now by going along certain lines or certain curves um, in space uh, which are related by dx by dt is equal to u plus a this belongs to one set of characteristics which we call as c plus and the other one is dx by dt is u minus a another set of characteristics which we call as c minus if you take separately in these two characteristics and uh, go back and look at the equations they transform into ODEs du plus dp by rho a equal to 0 and du minus dp by rho a equal to 0. These are uh, ordinary differential equations they can be integrated ok. So, 
uh, now these uh, so now you see uh, in this uh, discussion on finite uh, amplitude waves what we see here is that um, your speed of propagation uh, of the waves is not uh, a infinity anymore it is u plus a and u minus a these are the speeds with which the waves uh, propagate and a is not a constant uh, speed with which it um, propagates in space and time can vary. So, uh, that is the important uh, difference between uh, infinitesimal waves where you saw uh, that uh, the speed of propagation is the uh, speed of sound which is a infinity, but here it is not so. So, uh, now how would we proceed we have to uh, evaluate these uh, uh, integrals. So, uh, this is for C plus characteristic the integral is uh, J plus these are called the Riemann invariants because this has to be a constant if you integrate it u plus integral d p by rho a uh, is equal to a constant. So, along a C plus characteristic. Secondly, if you integrate the second equation that is this one and then you get u minus d p by rho a is constant along C minus characteristic. So, this is along u minus a and this is along u plus a this has to be borne in mind ok. Uh, it, it cannot be randomly done. So, uh, j plus corresponds to c plus uh, j minus corresponds to uh, c minus. Now, let us uh, so this is uh, quite general this is d p by rho a it is general. Now, uh, let us go into the specific case that we are uh, discussing that is to a uh, calorically perfect uh, gas. So, if you uh, take a uh, calorically perfect gas, so you know A square is gamma p by rho ok this is known and uh, these processes that we are discussing here is isentropic we are looking at the expansion waves that travel. So, they are isentropic waves. Um, so, uh, you know that uh, isentropic waves or the isentropic process is related by p is proportional to t power uh, gamma by gamma minus 1. So, uh, an arbitrary constant k 1 is introduced p is equal to k 1 t power gamma by gamma minus 1 ok. And of course, uh, t is actually uh, a, a square ok. So, a square is equal to gamma r t. So, you can use this fact here. So, t can be uh, replaced by a square with of course, other additional constants getting multiplied. So, you get p goes as k 2 t power or a a power uh, that is the speed of sound a a power 2 gamma by gamma minus 1. This is how we get this ok. Then uh, once we have an expression for p uh, we can write d p and d p is k 2 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 a power 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 minus 1. Uh, this will turn out to be k 2 d a 2 gamma by gamma minus 1. So, you can do this uh, gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 right and we uh, for uh, uh, we have to do integral uh, d p by rho a. Now, we have expressed p in terms of a. Now, can we express rho in terms of a we can use this equation a square is equal to gamma p by rho or you can use rho is gamma p by a square. So, you can use that equation and you have the term rho a. So, rho a is a term that needs to be evaluated this is uh, nothing but gamma p by a square multiplied by a this is gamma p by a and uh, p is k 2 a power 2 gamma by gamma minus 1. So, rho a also turns out to be uh, k 2 gamma uh, a power gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 
Now, d p by rho a, now this term d p by rho a uh, will uh, now turn out to be, um, uh, if you put things together, there is a 2 here, uh, this gamma gets cancelled with this, this gamma, k 2 goes off with this k 2. So, you have 2 by gamma minus 1, this a power gamma plus 1 goes by this a power gamma plus 1. So, you are left with d a integral d a. So, uh, what you get is uh, integral d a is a. So, u plus 2 a by gamma minus 1. So, uh, the uh, Ribbon invariant can be uh, um, solved analytically, you can get closed form solution u plus 2 a by gamma minus 1 is equal to constant along a uh, c plus characteristic. Similarly, for a c minus characteristic is the same integration, but you have this negative sign here. So, u minus 2 a by gamma minus 1 is constant. So, uh, if you take any, uh, so the way to solve these is starting from an initial uh, problem or initial value, uh, you uh, draw the uh, c plus and c minus characteristics. So, they do go like this and you know the u of you know the solution x uh, uh, the initial solution a at x comma 0 uh, this is known. Uh, so, at intersections of the c plus and c minus characteristics you evaluate u and a. Uh, because along a particular characteristic whether you take, so if you take this is uh, c minus characteristics, this is c plus characteristic. Uh, so, along the c minus characteristic j minus is constant, along c plus characteristic j plus is constant. So, it can be evaluated starting from the initial uh, value. So, this is initial line and uh, at any point you can solve them uh, by uh, just an algebraic uh, manipulation uh, is a solution of simultaneous equations a is gamma minus 1 by 4 j plus minus j minus and u is half of um, j plus minus. Uh, so, you have to look at so it, it is j plus plus uh, j minus ok. So, uh, this is the equations. So, for solving uh, a and u uh, separately. So, uh, the way uh, the solutions of, uh, of this kind are done is you have an initial uh, line and then you can solve uh, 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 the field at any uh, space and time. Okay. So, now let us go and just compare whatever we had done in the previous class to this class previous class we had uh, very small waves, infinitesimal waves and this class we had finite waves. Mm. Now, infinitesimal waves are very very small and they propagate at constant velocity which is a infinity. So, when they propagate an initial disturbance propagates uh, uh, with the same form, it does not change form because it is just propagating all parts of the uh, wave are propagating with the same speed a infinity does not change form. Uh, so, the shape same is st stays the same and uh, the equations are uh, linear hyperbolic equations. Uh, typically, these are uh, sound waves representative of sound waves, but if you come to finite uh, disturbances then uh, the change is quite significant and uh, so, these waves they do not travel all the time with the velocity a infinity, they travel with the uh, propagation speeds u plus a or u minus a and it can vary from space and in space as well as at different times, instant of times. So, because of this variation, uh, uh, the initial shape of the wave it changes with time. So, it gets deformed and these equations are fully uh, non-linear. So, uh, how can we apply this to shock waves, uh, shock tube problem? To get the connection, uh, we need to understand a little bit about how these uh, characteristics behave. So, if you have a region of uh, uniform flow that is uh, the velocity, pressure and temperature 
do not depend on space and time and there you draw the uh, characteristics uh, c plus and c minus the c plus and c minus are uh, nothing but dx by dt is u plus a and this is c plus and uh, dx by dt is uh, u minus a this is c minus. So, if you draw them at all points u and a are the same. So, uh, you can take them as u infinity a infinity so, they will same everywhere in a uniform flow field. Uh, therefore, uh, dx by dt is the same uh, along u plus a and u minus a. So, you have two uh, sets of straight parallel lines. So, they are always parallel they are straight in a uniform flow. Well, if you take a non completely non uniform flow that is represented here, here represented here uh, u and a are not constant anywhere. So, in general they are changing everywhere. So, they uh, at every point of course, you will have the x by dt is u plus a, but as you move away from the point you have another u plus a or u minus a as a consequence these uh, uh, are curves they are not straight lines and so you have two sets of curves. Okay. So, this is uh, completely non uniform uh, flow uh, both uh, is so, an intermediate between these two is a simple non uniform flow it occurs uh, uh, when you have a region of non uniform flow uh, bounded by uh, two uniform flows. Uh, and uh, if you think of it uh, this is typical in a uh, in the uh, expansion side of the uh, shock tube uh, where you have uh, region 4 here and region 3 here. Uh, region 3 is uniform mm, you have pressure is P 3 uh, speed is U 3 and region 4 is uh, having no velocity it has pressure P 4 T 4 U 4 is 0. Okay. Uh, and the expansion waves move between them. Okay. So, you have a non uniform flow which is the expansion motion of the expansion waves between two regions of uniform flow. So, that uh, follows the simple uh, non uniform flow problems. Okay. So, that is how it comes into picture and uh, what is uh, mm, uh, important there uh, is an understanding that uh, when you have such a flow. So, we already talked about uniform flows uh, here it is always straight uh, that is uh, rather uh, straightforward, but if you have a simple wave region a region where it is a uh, simple non uniformity not completely non uniform then you have a property that one set of uh, uh, waves uh, either one set either C plus or C minus it depends uh, on the problem one set of the waves uh, will be straight lines the other one will be curved and uh, you can show that uh, simply by considering uh, the case that you have a non a non uniform region here and you have a uniform region here and this forms the boundary of uh, non uniform region and a uniform region. So, uh, consider uh, so these are C plus characteristics here and C minus characteristics are coming in they are coming in here from the non uniform region. So, um, uh, uh, so, you can consider these two points this is a uniform flow while P Q lie in the non uniform flow along the C plus characteristics. Okay. So, if you do look at that uh, problem uh, then what you can show is uh, so along C plus uh, d x by d t is u plus a. Okay. Uh, but C minus characteristics are the ones which are moving from the uniform region to the non uniform region. So, along C minus characteristics the J minus that is Riemann uh, constants are invariant. So, you can write U p minus 2 a p by gamma minus 1 equal to U a minus 2 a a by gamma minus 1. Similarly, you can write it for points Q and uh, B. Uh, so, these two equations you can write, but since it is coming in from uniform region A and B U A and U B uh, they are the same. So, as a consequence you can get that U P equal to U Q and 
a p equal to a q. So, along the c plus characteristic essentially u p and u q they are here along the c plus characteristic in the non uniform region, but they have the same value that means uh, the c plus characteristics have the same d x by d t uh, at p is equal to d x by d t at q and their values are also the same uh, they are straight lines. So, uh, this is the picture that comes out that you have a region of uniform flow you another region of uniform flow in between if you have a non uniform flow and then one set of characteristics are straight lines the others are curved. So, uh, keep this uh, idea in mind because this is important when we now look at the shock tube in whole and uh, region 3 and region 4 are uniform regions uh, which uh, bound. So, this is uh, region 4, this is region 3 and in between you have uh, the expansion waves. So, the expansion fan uh, lies in between uh, those two and this uh, information is useful uh, when we look at the solution of the uh, shock tube problem.